Hey everybody, welcome back to Swedenborgian Life Live. Today we're going to be looking at what faith is, which is sort of a companion to our last show about love and sort of the other piece to it. So hopefully this will create a nice little set on your video shelf. My name is Curtis Childs and I'm the host. And then this is Dr. Jonathan Rose, who is hanging out and making with the smart stuff. So <laughs> hey, Curtis. appreciate for, uh, you contributing such things, all of you. So glad to have you here. And what we're going to do is what we always do. We're going to get to the meaning of some core part of life. In this case, faith. And what does that mm. even mean? Stay tuned. Right? Mm. We're going to get there and we're going to do it through a series of amazing steps, which are labeled as such. One to six, we're going to pose a little question to get the conversation started and flowing. We're going to take you through the, the keywords or keyword in this case, we're going to explain the, the, the deeper, the Swedenborgian meaning of a term you may be familiar with, but whose meaning you may only know in your heart. At right. This point. And then we're going to go nice. on a road trip through the spiritual world because we can, and then we're going to see what your questions are all about. We're going to meet someone from the audience, then we'll get your responses to this first question. So let's stop hyping up the first segment. Let's get to the first segment right now. You participate. You in the chat room participate in this very segment along with us. What we're going to do is we're going to answer a question you know, to get, get the conversation started. We want to hear your answers to it as well. We want to know how does it strike you? What are your thoughts on it? What's your answers to it? And at the end of the show, we'll, have be, we'll be compiling all that as the program goes on. And then we want to hear because we don't want to just hear what we have to say. We want to hear what the world has to say. And the question the world will be answering today is just... Where were you when you first heard about Swedenborg? Most people in the world would answer, nowhere, because I never heard about Swedenborg. <laughs> That's but, right. But if you're watching this show, you're probably in this select, very lucky, I guess, group of people who have heard about it. And it's a tough question for my, me to answer because I grew up in a Swedenborgian community, I meaning mm. there's people that knew about Swedenborg all around me from the time I was young on. So I don't recall the first time I, you know, was searching the internet and came across a weird show about Swedenborg. But I will say, I'll start so you have time to, to Good, save up, a, to think of, think of a really better answer. I will go with when I really feel like I I heard about Swedenborg. Like, like Swedenborg felt like he mm. arrived in a new sort of way. There were a lot of aha moments as I was growing up when it went from something that was just cultural and historic around me to like, this is potent. This is a tool. This is something that is more useful than the other things I know. Mm. Um, but one step was actually when I went to the college that I graduated from, Oakland University, uh, that I had previously been going to um, schools, like uh, sort of some schools that were Swedenborgian and some uh -huh. that weren't. So like I knew what, what it was all about to be around other people that knew about Swedenborg. But when I got to Oakland University, it was like I, I'd you know done high school with, with non-Swedenborgians, but you're not really thinking about stuff like that at, in high school. But when I got to college, it was like, there's mm. 20,000 people at this school, and I really get to hear what everybody thinks, and mm. I get to see in these courses. And to me, that really, I got to see, like, what does Swedenborg offer that's different than what mm. else is offered? What does he offer that corroborates it? And for me, I really felt like, this is awesome. Like, like because I really felt this, this body of knowledge can be a good global citizen. Mm. Like that this can contribute to the conversation. This can improve in areas and in other areas support. So overall, I was feeling like, I just really heard about not just Swedenborg, but what Swedenborg is in mm, context. So that, nice. there's mine. What about I you? I like that. Yeah, thanks. Well, I was in the same situation you were in. You know, my, my parents were raised in that tradition and so on. So, um, But I think when it sort of clicked for me was in a, a grand old place called Pearly Chase, that's in the United Kingdom in Great Britain. That's charming. And uh, yeah, it was a cool place. And uh, someone was giving a lecture about Swedenborg. And this thing clicked in my head. I think I was only 12. I, I was younger than the other people who were going to this uh, kind of retreat thing. Uh, but I was the son of one of the presenters there, you know. Okay. And so uh, I was just listening in on the lectures. Yeah. And it suddenly in my heart, I sort of thought, wait a minute, I think Swedenborg has something to do with the second coming. Oh, and right. I was so excited, like I'd made this unique discovery. 
Yeah. And then I told some of the people, and they said, you know, oh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> you know, so yeah. pat you on the head or something. But that was a moment of like, for myself, I just thought, wait a minute, there's something really valuable here. So, yeah. And that was cool. We obviously don't have time to go into it now, but the second coming. Not meaning that Swedenborg is it, but no. that he is describing that he is describing the nature of what the second coming is. Yes, like. something about this information has something to yeah. do with this new era that's yeah. coming, or something. You know, fascinating. Yeah. That should be a show on its own, but it's yeah. not. Today we're talking about faith instead, but we want to know. Okay, so those are our stories. Maybe yours are a little more concrete. Was there a moment when the Swedenborg thing was introduced into your life, and was it love at first sight, or was it this is weird and stupid? But now I can't stop thinking about it. And so, where were you when that? Yeah, happened, and where right? were you? Where yeah, were you? Yeah, okay, so right. get your keep typing them in, and uh, we'll compile them at the end. For now, now that we're warm, let's get in there and let's learn in our keyword extravaganza in part two. So we're going to do the companion piece to last week. If you weren't here, we talked about love. That's right. Is, you might think, we don't need us to tell you about love. Everyone knows what love is. But right. from a Swedenborgian perspective, love has a more expansive and more fundamental even definition than, than what we generally think of as love. That's right. And if you know Swedenborg, you know nothing stands alone. Everything's part of a pair. That's so right. So <laughs> love isn't just the core of life. It's got its partner. In the that's core, right. which you could call faith. It, that's it's right. It's paired in different ways, but that's our key word for today. Mm. And faith, I think so many people, I, I don't know, you know, who knows what's in people's minds and hearts, but yeah. I think there's a way that people have of talking about it, like a leap of faith, as if it means that you buy into something that someone else is saying, even though it doesn't necessarily make sense to you or can't you really see it in your mind, but... It's like okay, I'll I'll take your word for it. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll buy in. You know, right. I'll, I'll yeah. You know, blind faith. Yeah, yeah, that's right, kind of thing. And and that that the that leap of faith is to say, okay, I I'm I'm in. It's a decision. Uh, I don't see all the details. Don't see quite how it works, but but I'm in. And that's pretty extreme position. Yeah. But uh, what Swedenborg means by faith has nothing to do with that. It's it's quite a different definition. Different and I and I think more universal because you could probably look at that word faith and just say I don't I'm not one of those people. I'm not a religious kind of person. Yeah, I don't have how can faith faith is a thing that like you're describing right. that just a subset has and it's kind of I've seen it being very oh, that's a great hypocritical point. and and sometimes it seems like it's just something you can make up out of thin air. But so there's a subset of the population that has faith and everybody else doesn't yeah, or something like that. You know. But the way Swedenborg describes it is it's it's something more universal in a way, isn't it? So how does Swedenborg describe it? Let's start in Secrets of Heaven, number nine three six three. He says, To believe what is taught by the word or by the church's theology without living by it appears to be faith. And some people even suppose they are saved by it. Mm. But that faith by itself saves no one. Mm, you can see he's kind of negative to it from that, say, they suppose they're saved by it. You know, because there's a lot of talk about it's salvation by faith or even by faith alone and yeah. so on. But he's saying, no, if you're not living by it, that might appear to be faith, but but that doesn't save anybody. And he was living. Which is shocking. That was really shocking. Yeah, to and say that. he's making this statement from within a theocracy, right? Right. And this, at the time, to say that is drawing a line in the sand. Yeah. And, and he's, but he's, giving a pretty modern sentiment to say like yes, ah, he come is. on right. the, is this really something you're just saying you have faith you're not living right. any Does differently that save you yeah right so he says religion is a mere persuasion when the purpose behind people's belief in and love for the word and the church's theology is not service to their neighbor oh. or in other words service to their fellow citizen their country the church heaven and the lord himself that's an interesting unpacking of neighbor there isn't it the fellow yeah. citizen, country, church, heaven, the Lord. It's sort of a nice little five part. Yep. When I say neighbor, I mean all those things. You know. Yes, and notice right away he's pinning this thing on faith that says the purpose behind it is what makes it. It doesn't matter uh, how much information you've acquired. Doesn't matter how well you can recite things. Right. Why you're in the faith game mm. is the thing that makes it what it is. Yeah. So their purpose is not living rightly. Because life consists in serving these types of neighbor. Mm. Instead, their goal is affluence, high oh. rank, and a scholarly reputation. 
people mm. with this kind of religion focus not on the Lord and heaven then, but on themselves and their worldly advantages. Wow. Ouch. You know, there's that whole thing we've talked about occasionally, but the prosperity yeah. gospel, the yes. idea that you can see who has faith, because if you had faith, you would have more wealth, you'd right. have health, and so on. Yeah. You can see who doesn't have it by not having those things. And yet Swedenborg's taking a very different approach to the word faith there. He's saying it's not about yeah. that worldly... In fact, if it's just really about the money, that's not actually faith. It has to be a tool towards, and he puts it at the end as looking towards the Lord in heaven, but based on that unpacking that you mentioned before, you can see that it doesn't mean just thinking about spiritual sounding stuff. It means serving the neighbor in all those forms, yeah. your fellow citizens, the country that you're in, the world, the, the church, which is again a term that means the goodness and truth inside everyone as it's being developed by the design, divine design. And... That is it. Just a very different game that you're in. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it's so interesting to think about that focus on service. There's lots of people think that your faith uh, will be reflected in the service that you do. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, but not that it has anything to do with your like the heavenly state within you or something like that. You know. Yeah, and I I mean it's too bad because I thought we have this show. We talk about Swedenborg all the time, and we read all this stuff that talks about church and God. Like, we're there. We got all the, we got the faith. What are, you, yeah, what are you talking about? That's right. But if, if we're not doing this to try to help people, and yeah. if and when, and when I go walk out of this room, when anyone of you wonderful audience people walks out of here, if we are not taking the knowledge that we are gaining and using it to serve mm. humanity in whatever form you're going at, mm. then it ain't nothing. It's not. It's not living in the same way or something. Okay, yeah, so yeah. we're getting Amazing. all negative. We're saying all this stuff that faith okay. isn't. So then what is what faith? What is it? And, how, and specifically, how do you get to it? Like, how is oh, okay. faith formed? And Swedenborg mm. lays out three steps in true Christianity, 347. He begins by saying, first of all, for you keeping track at home, this is number one, faith is formed <laughs> by our turning to the Lord, because faith that is real that is, faith that brings salvation is faith from the Lord and faith in the Lord. Oh, and wow. And so that his definition of real faith is the faith that does bring salvation. So I guess his idea is that there's some faith that does and some yeah. doesn't. Yes. But it's not that just everything that anybody calls faith yeah. works for salvation. It's just you have to have the right kind and or something like that. I right? think we're running into terms again because we got the, the Lord mentioned three times. Mm. But what That's does Swedenborg right. mean by the Lord? That, again, could be its, its whole own show. We could definitely have a whole I show I mean, we actually did a show about it not so oh. long ago. Well, that's helpful. So when he says the Lord, he does lay down that, that he means Jesus Christ by the that's Lord. That's right. However, when he talks about Jesus Christ and who Jesus is, again, Jesus there gets again. to be more <laughs> universal. Um, uh, he talks about people who had never heard of the historical Jesus knowing the Jesus, meaning Jesus as God in the human form. So again, it's it's something that when he's saying turning to the Lord, he means all, turning towards what the Lord stands for, what the Lord yes, cares about. That's right. Love for the human Which race. Is love. That's right. Exactly. That's the yeah. core thing, I think. is uh, took me a while to sort of piece that together, but the core thing is that love for the whole human race yes and for the spiritual welfare and the long term you know the eternity the eternal welfare of everybody that's why in the earlier unpacking again he lists all these different ways you help humanity and then says yeah you know people who think about the lord in heaven but when he's describing what it means to think about the lord in heaven is you know helping your neighbor helping yeah, your community being a good good person anyway even if such a person might not think well i'm not really a faithful but I don't, i'm not really all that religious or whatever yeah but i really care about helping people that's less knowing about the lord conceptually and more emotionally yeah when you get those two together because you can have all these concepts about the lord but then you go and you're mean and you use the lord to become meaner yeah it doesn't do right. it either you gotta that's have particularly both together bad. yeah so that's the mm. first step in mm. forming this okay faith. that's the first all the right. second step is as follows second faith is formed by our learning truths from the word because faith in its essence is truth. Wow. Okay, faith in its essence is it's truth. truth. So uh, when I was talking before about faith being sort of buying into something that somebody says to you that you sort of trust them, but it doesn't really make sense to you, that's different than saying in its essence is, is truth. Like the thing that makes something believable is that it's the truth. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to believe that. Uh, <laughs> now, again, we're, so he says learning truths from the Word. And what does that mean? Mm. Is that the Bible? Or we have to go right. to the Bible to learn truths? Well, sort of. Uh, yes, no, I would say. Because, again, you have this concept that is deeper than you would originally think. We did do a program about this one as well, if you want to look into it, mm. called What the Bible Is. Oops, I was trying to point to it, and I kind of ex exceeded the boundaries of reality there. <laughs> um, but... The, the, in brief, the word is the 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 body of divine truth. Like that's right. All the divine truth it is it is in it is incarnated or it is um, embodied, ex or embodied, exemplified. I don't. There's yeah. there's got to be an e word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the Bible that you can find it there. People, but he also says it's written into the way nature is. He says it, it's right. written into other sacred texts. So in general, you're getting to go to the word to get truth can be going to the Bible, but it can be going to other sources of that same truth. That's right. So that's just a little bit of nothing for you. All the there elements that constitute faith are truths. Wow. All of, Yeah. So it's not like there's sort of a mix. You yes. know, it's truths that go to make up true faith. That's right. Yeah. Faith, then, is nothing but an array of truths shining in our mind. Oh, I love that definition. Yeah. Nothing but an array of truths. So it's a whole bunch of different truths. But what makes them shine, I wonder? Like there's an array of truths, Yeah. but they're in a particular order in your mind, and then they're shining. What makes them shine? I bet we're going to find out. Oh, Plus, you think so? I like the idea of you, you're not just gaining a truth. You're getting all these little truths throughout life, and they're being arranged through knowledge, through uh -huh. learning, into a form that creates this, this meta-phenomenon of faith. Yeah. And now you see the world in a certain way because mm. of all these little Some truths. Some are more important than others. and Yeah, it, yeah right. Right, right. They all sort of have a hierarchy in there or something. Truths teach not only that we need to have beliefs, but also in whom to believe and what to believe. So you can kind of see at all levels, truth is this really important sort of guidance. Hey, what are you doing? Is it just me? Is it freezing in here? Yeah, it's, just, it's definitely freezing. Is it? Well, it's because you see that window over there? Oh, you're kidding. The window's broken, so it's stuck open <laughs> a couple of inches there. Oh, that's cr oh yeah, no so wonder it's I'm, cold. I'm freezing. But Are you cold? Don't worry, I uh, I know how to fix it. Oh, you do? Yeah, actually, I I know all about it. I've been uh, watching this video series. They oh, got this great. great little series. It's like how to fix up your office if it's broken. Uh -huh. uh, this one about the windows, I, I've seen it like four times. So check this uh -huh. out. And it's really look. That's an intro. That's how you look do at the that. Intro to that the is good. And then look, it's just three steps. Bam, 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 and that's how you fix it. So and I so I've got that, and I've actually got it pretty much memorized. So like, um, so, uh, I, I don't get it though. Like I'm still like freezing over yeah, here. Yeah, me too. Oh man. So it like doesn't this have to at some point become something that you put into practice? Oh, like it's not enough for me to know what the problem is and have the knowledge to fix. It. I, I have was, to put I this in, knowledge into action. I was impressed that you. Knew right away, you know, you didn't think, oh, it might be the door or it might be something. You knew it was that window right over I'm there. I'm on top of things. And you've already been watching a video about yeah. it. It's just the still freezing thing that's troubling me right now. But. So I, so the knowledge doesn't have value into it until it's put into its correct action. And before we address the window, I just got to know, could this apply to all information, even religious information? I think as much as people may think of religious information as being abstract, I think when Swedenborg's talking about service to the neighbor and stuff, he's talking about something you should really put into action. Well, you know? and let's see if he says it himself in our third step here. The next quote says, again, in true Christianity, third, faith is formed by our living by those truths. There you go. Oh, that's how it's actually... Wow. So just loading it in your head, um, you know... no. No slight to you, but but just loading it in your head doesn't. I, I get it. Man. I just loaded I it. it out it's of my head. It's freezing in here. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm catching a cold. Yes, loading it into the head is not enough, and this is yeah. this is becoming so hilariously obvious in our current skit. There's got to be more to it because a spiritual life is a life that follows truths. Truths are yeah. not actually alive before they exist in action. Oh, they're not even alive. Before they exist in action. Wow, that's amazing. So every single truth is act, or there's a way to act on it. Yes, and you think about all those truths that we pictured in the faith 
this mm. conglomerate in the mind. You think of those as just concepts, but no, they've got to be something you've acted on. Truths dissociated from actions are just thoughts. Just thoughts. If they do not become mm. part of our will, they are not inside us. They are only on our threshold. They're not inside us, only on our threshold. Wow. Our will is our true self. Ooh, that's our another th- key word we did. And, and we self. Did it. We did both of those. Yeah, we, we, we did like everything. Oh. We didn't do our, though. Our thinking <laughs> reflects on in our, reflects our true self only to the extent that it is connected to our will. Wow. So it's like outside of you. So even hmm. though I've got this, the, I've got these shows, I know how to fix the window, I feel like I'm an expert in it. Until I've done it, I'm not. Until I've applied the knowledge in some way, in the way that it's meant to be applied. So you it's know like, what? Like any time now? Live like, on TV, <laughs> we're going to see this happen. I've fixed okay. this window. Okay. Bonk, 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 bonk. Oh, wow. Pretty nice, That's right? amazing. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. how it goes. That's it's, the I've, way. It's amazing. It's warming up like very rapidly Be- in here. Believe it or not, everyone mm. at home, this story has a moral to it. <laughs> really? Yeah. You got to live. I didn't see the correlation. You got to live it. Uh, applying faith to life is what Swedenborg calls charity, which is a term you'll... It's ch- translated in different ways, but yeah. you see this all the time that charity is this essential part of of life right and it has to do with love goodwill toward your neighbor that type of thing right yeah faith yeah, is yeah, supposed yeah. to be a philosophy mm. of how to live like that's the point of it. it's not to accumulate knowledge it's not to uh make yourself look real smart on the web it is to make life and better. it's a particular type of living that benefits others rather than harming them or, or something yeah right like yeah. yeah i think that's the qualifying yeah. factor so and he, he goes on a little bit about the importance of living it this is secrets of heaven nine seven eight three he says in order to be a lamp in order to illuminate the mind is that that shining we were talking about before like a, be. an array of truths is yeah. shining in the mind so how do we get there okay how do you become a lamp faith must be charitable and oh. therefore must be charity itself or neighborly love neighborly love not just it must not doesn't have to describe it it has to be it Mm. the case is the same with faith and charity as with truth and goodness truth is the form of goodness or in other words is goodness given a form that brings it to light brings it to light wow okay so this is the same thing here how those truths get to be shining is that they're all uh like love is Sort of making them sing with light or That's something, right. right? It's like the energy inside them. So mm. faith is the form of charity, or in other words, is charity given a form. Mm. So the thing that it does, the way it makes me behave, the way it makes me affect life in a positive way, that's that's the essence of it. That's the charity. Faith are the parameters, the knowledge, the guidelines that get me living in that right. way. Right. So it makes me think that faith and truth and those sort of things are... It's as if you thought about some time that someone did a very loving, kindly thing to you that really meant a lot to you, and so you wrote down what it is that they did. That writing down of it would be sort of the faith of it, right? It would embody that loving act. That's right. But that by itself doesn't turn into anything unless someone else does similar things or, you know, actually acts on it. That's absolutely right. And I think we're going to see now some of this in action. Because we're going to take a spiritual road trip, oh, my and we're going to find out just how important faith is in the afterlife. And it's not in the way you think, which is, is it going to send you to hell or heaven? But it's something that has to do with your literal head. And we're going to see that now in part three. It's educational, it's informative, it's a spiritual world road trip, and we're going to go on it with these people here. And this is how Swedenborg did it. He would owe it. He first gained a lot of his information through these out of body, whatever you want to call them, experiences, but also he would use accounts of those experiences to corroborate the universal laws that he puts out. Like you see him here describing what faith is and the importance of it, but here he's going to tell about when this was playing out right in front of us. Yeah, and I think as with some of these other spiritual road trips we've been on recently, uh, even like Swedenborg's learning a, a, a lesson, Oh yeah, the other people involved are learning it, like everybody's sort of, oh, interest. you know, like yes. it, it's a teaching moment, not just sort of like Dear Diary, like a weird thing happened today or something, you know? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it is strange at the same time. Yeah, and weird things were happening Which is to Swedenborg every day. What but. people people want to see. So. Yeah. This is from Swedenborg Spiritual Experiences 4711 and a couple numbers that follow. 
Let's get into it. So、mm. he says, "I was in the state like that of spirits, and was then entirely as they are, with a human body and human senses in a room." And so I gather this room is in the spiritual world. Yes, in the afterlife.、Right? That's、yeah. my reading. But he's、right. saying, "Guess what? Spirits have spiritual bodies and forms much like ours, and I was like that." Yeah. So there's our context, and there were many in another room. And books appeared there too. It's so cool that books are in the. I don't know why I like that. I guess、yeah. I'm sort of a book geek. But no, no, no. Just because、cool. you're the, the series editor of the new translation of the theological works of the. Oh, that's probably what it is. Okay. I looked at one book that was written in what seemed to be ancient Hebrew letters. Oh, cool. Which was more sort of curvy and stuff. He talks about them、right. sometimes, like the writing in heaven. But I soon closed it and looked at another. Then I spoke with one of those at the table. Here's where it starts to all go down. The rest sat at the walls, meaning okay, the、so、other people. Okay, so you've got one person at the table there,、mm-hmm. and there are all these books around, and the other people. I've been in 18th century,、uh, li- like living rooms that are reconstructed from the 18th century,、okay. and they would line the walls with chairs. It was just the way that they did. Th- they、mm-hmm. would leave a big open space in the middle,、yeah. and often just the side would be lined with chairs. So、yeah. I picture all these other people are sitting on those chairs、yeah. against the walls. It was in, in 1915 that they discovered how to put chairs. In the middle of the room.、So、yeah, that was, that was big. And、uh, the Ottoman, the invention of the Ottoman, that was huge. Wasn't yeah, that a whole the, empire or something? Turks, yeah,、okay. yeah. So,、right. so here we are. Swedenborg's talking to this guy in the middle of the table. I said that I was in the world. So this is Swedenborg in and, the physical world. Yes, and nevertheless, at the same time in the other life, I touched him and he felt it. And I said that within a person is the person who lives after death. Okay, so he's saying something pretty mind blowing. Yeah. That he is alive and functioning in both worlds, yeah, and that he can actually touch somebody else in that world、yes. because he's so present there, and yet he's in this world. So it's, it's a, it's a bit of a stretch. Like that's a、yeah. wild, you know, that's a, that's a kind of profound thing to say. Yeah, but it's、true. not something you hear every day. Yes, you know? but it's true, and it was true of what it, what was what was going and on. And so this、right. this would be a truth that could be a truth of faith, and we're、mm. going to see how this truth and its acceptance. Right. Do you think some people believe it and some don't? We'll see how it affects、okay. the rest of the story. He, because he believed this, appeared to be completely present. Oh, so that's the one at the table. Yep. But the rest who sat at the walls faded away as to their heads. So that finally they did not appear except as a shadow in place of them. <laughs> so that, I'll give you that. that that's strange. So these I'll, people I'll sort、that. of disapparate, and he says, "I heard afterwards <laughs> that they had not believed what I said, and that therefore they appeared to be fading away or absent." And interesting that the head sort of represents that. Yeah, faith of like whether you believe it or not. So the heads、yeah. disappear. Yep.、Mm. For the idea of one person enters fully into that of another in the place where it is affirmatively received. Ah, so if someone else is really open to it, then it's like boom, I am with you. So、yeah. the person in the middle there who was at the table is like, I get it. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You know. Yeah. And, right. 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 I, and, I see the truth of that. But and again, these people. It's not like these people are punished for not seeing that. It's just that they're like. They're in a different sphere, so they, they're and it's a reflection. They're out of there, yeah, and kind of handy to be in a world where someone's head disappears when they don't buy what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> like okay, I'll just pack up my briefcase now, <laughs>、right. and I can tell we're not going to close this deal. Right, right. Your head just disappeared. Yes, a certain spirit appeared clearly to me, but the rest began to vanish as to their heads. The, and this is him talking later on about it. The reason、yeah. for this was that this one who was appearing clearly affirmed the things I said and believed. Oh, so it wasn't just that he bought it, but he's or she is actually saying, yeah, no, that. You know, I can see that that's true. That we、yeah. really do have a spirit that's in the spiritual world, even while we're living in the physical、yeah. world, and that spirit is so real that it can touch other spirits and so、yeah. on. That, you know. And and with going with what we were saying before, they both must have had some kind of life experience with this thing to have that kind of like confirmation. Yes, right. Yep. So from this, oh, oh but the rest. Who disappeared as to their heads did not affirm and so did not believe.、Mm. From this can be seen what the case case is with faith in the Lord. Oh, our key word. The Lord appears to those who believe and affirm, and He is joined to them through love. Oh, that is to say, through charity. Wow! So He appears to those who believe and affirm, and is joined to them through love. Yeah, but. By contrast, maybe not to others, right? Yeah, and it's it's funny that so he appears 
to those who believe, right? So you you can have, like we're saying, you can have an idea of God, so you have sort of an appearance of God in your Mm. mind, but he's joined to you through love, that is to Mm. say, through charity. So if you just have the appearance, but don't, you just have the idea, the faith, but don't have the love, there's none of that joining that happens. And if you understand that he's really all about love... yeah. Then you're seeing him. That's right. right. That's like right. You can see him because you can see the love. Whereas if you're all tangled up in some doctrinal this or that, but you don't get the love part, yeah. it's not really manifesting in this. He, he's not. You're seeing not seeing him in the way right. same way. If I'm reading this right, for faith does not exist, and the, thus the Lord does not appear unless there is love. Wow, faith does not exist unless there's love. That's getting wow. that's getting even more intense. Yeah. That is to say, charity. So even before what, even if you have a picture of. The Lord without love, you're not really seeing him. You you yeah. you could get something obscure like you're saying, but mm. not that way. Mm. Um, unless there are love, that is to say, charity. For this is what receives faith, from which comes presence and conjunction. Okay. The Lord can certainly appear also to those who do not have love, and so to those who have a falsely convincing faith. But mm. this, so here we're, we're both trying to figure out which is it. You know, which is you, it? But here he says, but this is an imaginary appearance, not a real one. And it's making me think back to that point earlier in the show about the faith, because a lot of people think, well, your faith, you know, I mean, Jesus says your, your faith has made you whole or has saved you and things like yeah. that. So there's some kind of faith that saves you. I can see that if your faith is in the Lord as a loving person and that you are a loving person to other people, that that saves you because then you have a relationship right yeah. right you can see you're seeing something true about that love yeah so mm. you can you can see god a bit if you don't have love you can understand you can get this sort of appearance but it's an imaginary one so it's yeah. it's based on it's kind god, of a projection or something but it's but, not really but you're missing an essential element that makes it a little unreal but when you've got the love that allows mm. you not just to see God, but be joined. Doesn't it say something about blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, or something, something like that? There's some, something just, just that. maybe. It just yeah. may be, and this may yeah. be the illustration, the literal illustration of that. Yeah. That it no longer is just a nice set of words on a page. That it's it's happening. It's really. It's happening. W- and it seems to go both ways. Like when people are not buying what Swedenborg says, their heads disappear. But he's also saying. That if you don't believe, like it goes the other way around. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Like you can see the the Lord if you are, like maybe they can't see Him either, yeah. or something like that. Right. And that if we don't, if we don't believe in universal love and love for the human race, your heads like disappear into the Lord. The Lord can still come to you, but you're when when the Lord, because when the Lord talks, the Lord is talking about love. And yeah. He's talking about That's I want right. to I want to help. I want to reduce suffering. I want mm. everyone to be eternally happy. And if the Lord starts saying that, just like Swedenborg was saying this little detail to this spirit, and everyone else started to disappear. But the Lord is trying to talk to you, and He's saying, "Listen, love is what it's all about. It's not about you being better than other people. It's not about getting what you want at the expense of other people. It's about service and about the human race." And you're just like, "Whatever. That's not what my life is about." You start to fade out. You start to fade out of the mm. room. So we got to get it so we can receive that. It's a great little road trip because uh, it's a weird story. It's a typical strange story about people with disappearing heads. Yeah. And yet when you really dig into it, it's got a core truth in there yeah. about the nature of love and belief. and Totally. And, and uh, that, that's cool. That's the, that's the Swedenborg experience. And uh, so even as we were reading that, you could see we had some questions. I'm hoping it brought up questions for you as well, because our next segment is going to be our live Q&A. So type some questions into the chat room, and we'll do our best to try to answer them the best that we can, coming up in part four. So let's see what's on everyone's mind. Let's see what did this bring up or what are some other things that are going on. We'd love to hear what you're thinking about um, because we want to talk about everything that is related to this car. That's right. Let's see what what kind of conversations we can have here. This is our first question. It's from Katie. You said in a previous episode that even if you think an evil thought, it's as if you did it. Is the thought form of faith different? So, well, you know, we've done a lot of previous episodes. We said a lot of crazy things in those episodes. <laughs> but what I, what I think... As I look back. You know, well, yeah, we were young then. We didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> what I think you would be referencing here, Katie, is that Swedenborg will say at times that an in- oh, uh, a thought in the will, an intention in the will is the same as a deed. 
if the That's only right. reason you like if i was like really mad like i was like mad at something you said and i was like man i would throw this glass of water on you dr jonathan rose series editor of the new center edition if but i know that all the audience is going to be like well i thought curtis was so nice and like swedenborgy <laughs> but he just did that so if that's the only reason that i'm not doing it or i'm worried that you'll punch me if those are the only reasons then it's the same as if i did it but yeah. just having a thought fly through your mind like oh you should uh, i should throw that glass of water at dr jonathan rose if I if I'm like whoa what was up with that and I don't really want to do it and I don't dwell on it and think well, that would be great and say I would do it then it's not as if I did it right and I think there's a slightly different use of the word thought that may be confusing here but but uh, when it, when the word evil is in there that's more about the heart mm -hmm. F falsity and that sort of thing would be more about the mind and so if you just have some false you know i mean all sorts of dumb stuff goes through our minds every day right but thinking an evil thought i think what we may have been talking about there is if you really have a a plan or like you meditate like you love to just picture taking revenge on somebody and just really going crazy on them or something and you're really dwelling on that and it's because you'd like to do that's the sort of thing that's as if you did it whereas right. the thought form of faith i think is a little different if it's just sort of like having thoughts about oh yeah there's there's a god and there's a or something 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 but you're not doing anything for for anybody it, it it's not about love it's actually about well i know a lot and you know yes. so i'm a good person and i'm way better than that person i can judge right. that person cuz they're they're not doing it right what's the th what's the faith thought the form of you know if the if your faith is just a form of this inner urge to be superior and to force people That's to right. think the same way that you do then right then then the the form it's even though it sounds like it's good because it's got the words god and heaven and other stuff in it it's not good so either the, the to actually be faith it's got to be the form of this love and humility and everything else that that makes it inside good, good. okay oh so man. katie hopefully that we're addressing the right thing there um and we're going to move on. Great question. This Great is question. question number two. Robert asks, do some people limbo between heaven and hell, have love for what is good and true, but unfortunately also have hellish liking sometimes? I think I would be one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, I love the use of the word limbo. That's really yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, right. So what do you think? I mean, right? Oh, I think so. Definitely. Like, you know... Um, uh, isn't there some scriptural story about how long will you halt between these different, you know, it's like you're going back and forth, right. back and forth. And um, uh, while we're alive in this world, uh, like the way Swedenborg divides it, we talked a few weeks ago about the inner self and the outer self, right. that your inner self, and Paul talks about this in Romans chapter 7, that, that you've got, you can have good things in the inside and bad things on the outside, and there's sort yeah. of a struggle going on between the two. And so uh, I definitely think it's possible to be in that situation, uh, and that your outer self, it's why Jesus talked about the washing of the feet, as I understand that story, because you walk through life feet meaning the outer self yeah your outer self can get kind of dirty in the course of being in this world there there are things you're exposed to that you know sort of you might they might be alluring in some way or so you know whatever it is like some you develop or, appetites or so yeah. you know what i mean and, and you've got that stuff on your feet Which is wiring right? uh, but how important is it the most important thing that you would die for or is it just like a bad habit and that if you could, you'd get rid of it? And, you know, and so that's how the decision goes between heaven and hell. And uh, I like the fact that in the long run, uh, the idea that Swedenborg presents is that you you do eventually make a choice. You know, it's just sort of push comes to shove. Uh, but people can sort of delay that day for a long time. Yeah. And the whole like here, everybody's a mix. 
But the whole spiritual world process, world of spirits process, which is the initial phase, is this slow sifting out where, yes, you, you get, if you, if you got at the core, like here, it seems like the person you're describing, Robert, is you love goodness and truth, but oh uh, yeah, you like some bad stuff as well. The whole world of spirits process is this get, if you, if you want good, we'll, we'll take care of that annoying evil for you. If you love evil, right. we'll get that painful good out of you. That's right. But even angels of the highest degree mm. have hellish stuff sometimes. Swedenborg describes that the angels go through it like a day-night sort of cycle. And when their sort of ego starts to get revved up, it's not nearly as bad as ours, you yeah. know, but... And it's not like they're really actively doing evil to no. anyone, but they start to get a little full of themselves and Something they like kind of sink down out of heaven, quote unquote, for, yeah. for a time. And it's not like anything creepy, like angels are all corrupt, but no, they, there's, they go through some kind of, okay, I'm, um, I'm not totally on my game right now. And through that, they're perfected even farther. There's a purification. You can, you That's keep right. Keep going up and up. So there's That's always right. going to be this every once in a while, there's a problem. So I, and I like the show we did about the spirals because I think some of these things, like you talk about, have a hellish liking sometimes. Yeah. It'll come around sometimes. It'll come around again. Yep. What the main thing I think the Lord is looking for is just that it's a little better. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. getting worse. It, right. It's it's spiraling up. Yeah. You know, it, it it's getting healed. Yeah. You know, because these things don't just kind of totally go away. It, it just seems to cycle around sometimes. Very good. So, Robert, good hopefully that, that addresses some things you were thinking about. Great question. Let's go to the next one. This is from Indrazed. How different can our physical self be from our spiritual self? Is there a thin line? So, we talked about the inner and outer self. Um, so, uh, or, uh, so, we could address this physical, like the body, I think let's do that because he says physical self. How different can our physical self be from our spiritual self? Is there a thin line? The line is almost non-existent in that Swedenborg says it's not like the spirit, like the spirit is just kind of a core inside your body. Every part of your body is filled with the spirit. That so much so that your spirit has the same shape as your body. And you think down to the cellular level, all, all those little cells and membranes and molecules and things, that there's a spiritual force, like your spirit has something behind each one of those. So they're very, very similar. Um, you're, you're feeling your spirit operate in your, in your thinking and feeling. So it's, it's very connected. Yeah, that is the life all through the, the body. In terms of the physical form, it can be entirely different, Swedenborg talks about. You know, just the way you look or something can be just yep. a function of heredity or, you know, things that happen to you or whatever. And, um, but your spirit can look very different. It can have a very uh, good look. But yeah. it's also true what you're saying, that the spirit is everywhere in the body. And that if, if you see a deceased body, the, it's so clear that something's departed. You know, like that life that was in there in every molecule is is you know gone yeah or something, you know right so yes yeah, so there is this right there's simultaneously it's very different and very similar um and i think in the in the uh spirit the spiritual version when we talked about outer self and yeah. inner self before right i think in some people they could be very different and some they can be very aligned you know, and yeah. and uh, the 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 bible talks about people who are double minded as a bad thing you know, that if you're like hypocrisy is to be nice on the outside, but you're really being manipulative on the inside or something yes. like that. So when those are in two different states, that's not so good. Uh, I think when you, it's a beautiful state that we eventually get into where our outside truly reflects our inside and we're, we're just all on the same, we're all lining up in the same, there's no right. more battle going on. Right, right, right. Yeah, so so there's a couple of different ways that, that uh, we, we're thinking of uh, addressing this, and I think we're going to do a uh, another question before okay. we wrap this up here. Great. So thanks so much for that one. Let's look at the, our last one. This is by Mary. Was it always the plan that evil spirits would try our faith? Because it's, so, so for a little background, Swedenborg says that Everything we experience that's miserable internally, internally meaning thoughts and feelings, is coming out of hell. And everything wonderful is coming out of heaven. So 
if you think over your life, you most certainly have some instances where you're dealing with annoying, painful, frightening thoughts, feelings, and events and things like that. So if that's all coming out of hell, are you sure that's how we got to do it? Like, was that always the way that it was set up? Or is this some kind of Band-Aid that's been put on the human situation? Yeah. Where's that all coming mm. from? And I'll, I'll start it off by saying that, no, the the, the way that... First of all, there, there wasn't even intrinsically from the beginning evil spirits. Right. There was just... It was originally humanity and everyone was pretty much good. Yeah. Like that, that was... That used to be our default setting. Is to, that it wouldn't make any why why would you be happy that someone else is suffering like why would you want to be superior to other people these are alien con they seem like native and and familiar right. to us but these are alien con ways for a human being to think so initially nobody thought like that evil crept in and more importantly you had this dividing of the will and intellect the whole original divine design for how the lord would manage human beings fell apart so we have to be connected to these evil and good spirits to keep us afloat. It's this whole mess that is very much intrinsic to the current state rather than the ideal state, right? I I, I agree. And the um, in an interesting way, uh, Swedenborg talks about the fact that um, you don't actually need evil spirits for this. It'll work just to have spirits who are not as good as you are, and they, they will uh -huh. tend to pull you down. You know, so you could do the whole thing without even having to have evil spirits. Right. You could just have good spirits. He even says that at the end of his life in the world, uh, Jesus was being tested by the highest angels. The, you know, they were below right. where he was. And so so you don't need the evil spirits. But the the Lord is really good at just dealing with whatever cards you deal him. Okay, I can use this for this, and I can use that for that. So right. he, he makes it all work. And because of our heredity, it's evil spirits often that at least early on who are who are trying our our faith and testing it. Yeah. Which is testing our commitment to love and our putting that into practice and everything. Because Swedenborg says that um to angels in the highest state, you talk to f about them about faith, and they're like, "What are you talking about? What's that? That's a strange word." Yeah. What did he, you say? He's, he says yeah. it's it's like me telling you, "This is a microphone. You've got to believe that this microphone <laughs> is really here. I mean, it's right in front of you." And you're saying, "I can see this. I can see it." The the, the, <laughs> the, the, the original state is just no. Every all of this stuff that we now consider items of faith is self evident. You just right. see it you, as clearly as you see the the room around you. So there didn't used to be any kind of... Now we have to do this faith journey. And so getting right. it tested and refined is good, but it didn't That's used right. to be the way you needed to progress because yeah. you had this intrinsic knowledge of the whole thing. That's so... That's so right. <laughs> yeah. I really appreciate you trying to like encourage me <laughs> tonight. It, it's like giving me the confidence I need to take us to the segment four, which is what we're going to do right now. Th or I mean, segment five. This is where we get to meet a member of the audience. I got to sit down and have an awesome interview with Regina, who, who is a fan of ours, who's currently living in Colorado in the U.S. So this is what she had to say about how she found us and what the whole Swedenborg thing meant to her. Okay, hey Regina, thanks so much for taking a little time to talk to us. I always like to start by asking the question, how did you find out about uh, our show and about Swedenborg? Okay, well, um, I found Swedenborg, sort of, in about the late 1990s, um, um, maybe early 2000. And I was living in Southern California and I was driving to, um, to visit a friend in Palos Verdes. So, I had driven by many times, but there's a really beautiful um, church, um, a Swedenborg church, actually, that um, I had seen in Wayfair Chapel. But one day I just decided to check it out. And when I did, it was really strange because uh, it's easy to fall in love with that place because it's very, very fantastic views and um, the church was just exceptionally beautiful. But um, somehow I, I felt like a presence there. And I just really kept going to that place to pray and meditate. Um, 
I would invite friends to go there just to talk, you know, and uh, discuss things. But somehow I, I saw some of the pamphlets. They had a little cottage there where they had like library, a library, small library. And I read some of the things and I felt, um, gosh, I really like this, very inspirational. But it was nothing too deep. And so intellectually, I didn't really connect. I just kept going, actually, seriously, for years. <laughs> I went to that place. And then um, it was about, you know, 2003 or so. Um, I was dating my husband at the time. And I took him there like I took everyone else. And um, we went to the library there and we bought a DVD called Splendors of the Spirit. Right. That one kind of did it because we watched it. We both really liked it. We shared it with other people. Um, it was just opening up a new world and understanding Swedenborg, which before I didn't really pay that much attention. <laughs> so, um, and well, we actually, it also introduced us to your coworker and friend, um, Jonathan Rose. Yeah, right. So he was narrating it. And I remember um, he did a really great job. And I like, he wore his hair like kind of like Swedenborg. It reminded me of the first picture I saw of Swedenborg. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, that's like a side note there. But actually, we just, um, we also were going to get married there, but they didn't have any time. It was, you know, reservation. So we got married in a, a church just down the street from there. And um, after that, we went to get a book, um, The Heaven and Hell, which a lot of people have read. So um, we moved to Colorado shortly after that. And my husband started reading the book. And I usually only would see him, you know, reading like an astronomy magazine. <laughs> but he just kept reading that book. And so I got interested. I started reading, um, checking things online. Uh, we were always very involved in spiritual communities, so I just it was something I did on the side. But um, in about like in 2016 March, we moved here to Colorado City, which is out in the Boonies countryside, and um, I came across one of your videos. And so we started um, watching them, kind of binge watching all the old ones. And then now we were watching the new ones every week. And I'm uh, really grateful for them. You guys do a great job, put a lot of thought into it. And um, they're just really uh, helpful to us. So. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so, so glad that you, you, you're interested, you know, kept going through all that stuff. And so I'm wondering, yeah, what... <clears throat> what concepts, once you did start to engage with, with Swedenborg's ideas and things like that, what what stuck out about it? What made you want to keep uh, going back and, and reading and, and learning more in the videos? Um, well, kind of three things I'm really grateful for. One of them was, of course, uh, Swedenborg talks a lot about um, the, the next life, you know, near-death near death experiences. I had been familiar with that but he took it to a whole another level. And um, I, I lost a son in 2006, my oldest son, mm -hmm. three children. And so I had an experience about six months later um, when I was in prayer, I got like a message and um, it was kind of clear to me what it meant. I was asking about something because it was very sudden and traumatic death. So, um, but when I, learned about correspondences and just some of the things that we're reading, I just really got a deeper sense of the message. And that I'm really grateful for. It was really um, good and helpful. Um, another one would be gardens. I kind of have this thing about gardens. <laughs> so um, I know you had an episode about soil and seeds and you know, flowers and tending to a garden. Um, and then I know Swedenborg also wrote most of his um, writings in a garden, his summer house, I guess, in the summer at least. So I, um, I, I have this kind of a experience throughout my life and my spiritual path. Coming from agnostic family, I wasn't really exposed to religions um, or, um, you know, not even Christianity that much. But I had a spiritual experience when I was younger 
about five to six years old, and it was in a garden that my mother's um, foster brother had built with some other uh, teenagers years before. And that was a really special experience. I think it put me on the path with, um, I mean, falling in love with Christ, you know, with Jesus Christ. Um, and it was, mm, I don't know, it just happened out of the blue. And I do remember it, but I didn't really understand it. So, um, and then also um, the garden at the chapel. And um, we are also when I was about 11 or 12, it wasn't really for religious reasons, but my father used to take me to a Baha'i center about 20 minutes from where I lived in Germany. And um, there I also, I don't know why, I kept going back. You know, it was beautiful gardens, a beautiful building. And the services were very, um, I went once in a while, we went in there because there were different people from different religions actually getting up and talking. And uh -huh. um, so that was a little bit of exposure there. But, um, and then the garden um, in Sweden, and Sweden actually just recently we went to Sweden and um, we went to, we tried to see, um, well, we tried to go to where Swedenborg actually had his summer house and oh, yeah. with all his writings. Um, it was a little complicated because first we went to a place that was a replica and that was really nice. Then we went to a park and um, I kind of was getting tired, but then I got a call from um, this lady, Susanna, because we had asked before if we could see the church. It was closed, but she took us to the place where Swedenborg actually did his writing. Oh, wow. And even so, I mean, it was a replica of his summer house. We saw the real one first and we saw the replica. But at the place we actually, you know, lived, there I also felt that same feeling. I never liked the present. So um, I, I don't know exactly why, <laughs> but I told this lady. And besides, she was so wonderful and so kind, um, showing us around all those different places we got to see you now. Well, I just want to say thanks so much for, for being willing to share how the material has affected you throughout your life in, in, in good and bad times. I just feel like you put it really well, and it's been, it's been really nice getting to meet you and, and hearing from you a bit of your story. Thank you, and thank you all for the work you're doing. Great. It's our pleasure. Awesome. Thanks, Regina. It was just great to get to hear that it's making a difference in her story. I just love like seeing the actual people that, that are in there in the camera. That's right. That's hip, man. And speaking of that, let's uh, let's get a little more audience interaction mm. and feedback. It's time for our ice melter, which is just like the counterpart to the icebreaker. You remember when we did the icebreaker, we were asking this audacious question, where were you when you first heard about <laughs> Swedenborg? And what did people answer? Well, here's our synthesis of the re reaction we got. Our behind the scenes team has been furiously putting this together. And this is what you all had to say. So it begins where <laughs> John <laughs> Child says baby crib. Uh, Will Linden said reading the New York, and I, I'm fascinated wow. by this, reading the New York Times church ads. Wow, how cool is that? Reading a book called We Are Immortal. Mm. My dad introduced me to Swedenborg. Nice. Reading about William Blake 45 years ago, then in 2017, H&H, &H, Heaven and Hell quotes started appearing in a Facebook feed. That, yeah. that, so that's uh, Swedenborg Foundation's cool. Facebook page. As a kid, would ask dad about spiritual stuff, and he would tell me to check out Swedenborg. But I never did until a few years ago. Oh, that's awesome. Well, hopefully dad was right. Like, <laughs> hopefully it's worth <laughs> seeing Swedenborg now. Next one. From my Menorah Night Lutheran Seminary trained Aikido black belt instructor after my Aikido class. Wow. So there cool. you go. You got, it sounds like a, a wise guy to hang out with. From my dad, my go. grandfather studied Swedenborg and talked about him all the time. Look at that. Reading Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher in high school. Look at that. Is, that, is Swedenborg in Usher? Oh, we read that for school. From a friend who was raving about off the left eye. Nice. Good. Well, thank you, friend. I guess you got the check we sent you. Researching NDEs for bachelor's program. Book of Swedenborg's in a prison library. Look at that. Wow, yeah, that's fascinating. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Watching off the left eye, Gabriel, mm. Terry, Bonnie, all kinds of people saw uh, him from us, which is good. That's We're doing great. our part then. Ghost stories on YouTube. Nice. Looking for NDEs on the internet. Mm. My wife who has passed came to me in a dream saying, search spiritual marriage. 
One Google search later, I found off the left eye. My life has been so much better. Wow. That's Keith Curry. That's wow. a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Searching for truth on YouTube. Mm. Looking up strange ghost spiritual videos led me to off the left eye. That's from Indres. We did a question with today. More. There's more. Searched why the left eye about searching for Illuminati videos. Yeah, we get, <laughs> we get some Illuminati traffic. We'll take it wherever we can That's get it. Great. Saw a Facebook comment mentioned Swedenborg and searched YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the place to be then. Searching extraterrestrial and intraterrestrial beings. Nice. Searched on YouTube. Came across off the left eye searching for relief after life tragedies. Mm. Stumbled across it on YouTube on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Looking for NDE discussions on Facebook. Stumbled upon it on YouTube. Googled spirituality and found off the left eye. Searched how to know your angels. Angels found off the left eye. And I think we <laughs> did we have one more slide here. That's it. Okay, right. good. Well, that's plenty for me. So that's cool. And what I that's hope is cool. in all these different ways that you found the Swedenborg thing that as as was said in one of those, life has been better since. So that's the point. You know, that's what we're that's what we're shooting we're, for. We're that's trying right. to do. Um, thank you everyone out there for making my life better tonight. Oh, and Curtis. Yes. Could I thank you for fixing that window? That's really made a big difference to me tonight. Then you might say I put my faith in action. You <laughs> did, didn't you? It's like it's an example, right? And we're trying to <laughs> illustrate the concepts. Hopefully that's a good tool for it. If you liked it, if you could tolerate it, then you're gonna love next week. Before we get there, let me just say please like and subscribe. That that all those people running across us on YouTube in part is because people have mm. been doing their liking and subscribing and sharing and getting it so that when somebody searches for something Thing, we pop up because if, if nobody was participating in, in, in sharing us YouTube would, would never recommend us anyway so thanks to all of you for that if you want to make the programming possible consider joining us on Patreon it is a non-stop party and by that I mean it's a way in which you can donate a dollar an episode and if you do that we give you behind the scenes just extra little content as a thank you for making this non-profit venture possible uh, Dr. Jonathan Rose, thank you so much for coming. Hey, for thanks, your, Curtis. Your insights and, and kind soul. And everybody, we hope you'll see us next week. We'll be here at the exact same time. We're now going to be talking about the church. We said um, we unpacked faith, and this is what it is. Swedenborg uses the word church. What does he mean by church? Here's is another it, one. Is it the thing you think? Well, of course, it's not quite. And we're going to explore that then, and we hope to see you there. Swedenborg in Life is Amy Aquarola, Morgan Beard, Curtis Childs, Karen Childs, Matthew Childs, Alexa Cole, John Connolly, Cara Dom, Chris Dunn, Stuart Farmer, Ben Keyes, Reed McArdle, Chelsea Odner, Jonathan Rose, Shiloh Silverman, and Shada Sullivan.